Hey guys, happy Easter. Thanks for being here. Can you give a special uh, thank you to Kat and Caroline for going in hot chocolate for everybody? And then please stand up and shout if you still need some, okay? Can you stand up and shout if you still need something? They know where to go. There you go. I thought that'd be helpful. Keep, keep shouting until you get it, okay? Yeah, you're not being loud enough. They need to know where to go. Yeah, that's right. Savannah's helping me out. Yeah, can y'all say hello to Savannah? She's my daughter. She's going to help me out. All right, y'all can go ahead and sit down now. We'll get started. They're going to bring it to you. Don't worry. We're going to read, It's Not Easy Being a Bunny. Who thinks it is easy to be a bunny? You do? Why? You can hop. That's a good answer. Who else? Why? You can hide the Easter eggs. That's a good thing, too. Why? You can eat carrots. You like to eat carrots? You do? Do your parents make you eat a lot of carrots? Yes. Why else? And you have to find it. You're right. Who thinks it's not easy being a bunny? Why? Because what? Someone's going to eat you. That could be. What else? What? Yeah, you have to do that all the time. You're right. I don't like to eat carrots either. That would make being a bunny not fun. Why? They probably don't get to have hot chocolate, right? That's right. OK, let's go ahead and start reading this one, OK? PJ Funny Bunny was very sad. He did not like being a bunny. His mother made him eat cooked carrots every day. That wouldn't be fun. He had far too many brothers and sisters. Who has too many brothers and sisters? You all have too many brothers and sisters. Wow. Too many cousins. Yes, I have too many cousins, too. And his ears were very, very big. One day, PJ decided to leave home. I don't want to be a bunny anymore, said PJ. I want to be a, what does he want to be? He want to be a bear. Who wants to be a bear? Yeah. And PJ went to live with the bears. But when the bears went to sleep for the winter, PJ could not sleep at all. Living with the bears was not very exciting. So PJ said, I don't want to be a bear. I want to be, who knows, a bird. Yeah, a bird. And PJ went to live with the birds. PJ liked being a bird until he tried to fly. See him falling all the way? So BJ said, I don't want to be a bear or a bird. I want to be a beaver. And PJ went to live with the beavers. Would that be fun? No? The beavers, the beavers like to work very hard. You do? You like to work very hard? Well, PJ did not like to work at all. No, he didn't like to work at all. So PJ said, I don't want to be a bear or a bird or a beaver. I want to be a pig. Yeah, who wants to be a pig? Yeah. <laughs> and PJ, he went to live with the pigs. But the pig only liked one thing to do, and that was to sit in the mud. So PJ said, I don't want to be a bear or a bird or a beaver or a pig. I want to be 
a moose. A moose would be pretty cool, I think. And PJ went to live with a moose. You can say it. Mom! Good job. But PJ could not make good moose calls. So PJ said, I don't want to be a bear or a bird or a beaver or a pig or a moose. I want to be a possum. Do you even know what a possum is? Do you know what it is? That's exactly right. They live in trees because they're great climbers. And PJ went to live with a possum. See him climbing up the tree? The possums like to hang upside down. Do you all like to hang upside down? Yes, I bet you do. Particularly after all the hot chocolate. But hanging upside down gave PJ a headache. So PJ said, I don't want to be a bear or a bird or a beaver or a pig or a moose or a possum. I want to be a skunk. How many of you guys want to be a skunk? Oh, a couple. And PJ, PJ went to live with the skunks. It did not take PJ very long to find out that he did not like living with the skunks. Why not? They stink, that's right. So PJ said, I don't want to be a bear or a bird or a beaver or a pig or a moose or a possum or most of all, a skunk. What I really, really, really want to be, I want to be a bunny. So PJ hurried home. The funny bunnies were very happy to see him, and PJ was very happy to see them. That night, PJ ate all of his cooked carrots. Do you eat all of your cooked carrots? You like yours, right? That's right. And played with every one of his brothers and sisters. He was so happy to be a bunny again that he did not care that his ears were very big. At least everyone can see that I am a bunny, PJ said, and not a bear or a bird, or a beaver, or a pig, or a moose, or a possum, or a skunk. How was that? Did y'all like that one? All right, who still needs their hot chocolate? Oh, you need more. Look at that. Is there more? OK. Do you want to read this one? Sure. Show it to them. Okay. I can read it when you get tired. Okay. Until the hot chocolate's passed out. Caroline, it's one up here. It didn't get one. <laughs> Go up here. Okay, do you want to read? Sure. This is Savannah. She's going to read the second one to us until she gets tired. She reads to me all the time at home. She, she's a better reader than I am, too. Show it to him. All right. Make way for ducklings. Mr. and Mrs. Mallard were looking for a place to live. But every time Mr. Mallard saw what looked like a nice place, Mrs. Mallard said it was no good. There were sure to be foxes in the woods or turtles in the water. And she was not going to raise a family where there might be foxes or turtles. So they flew on and on. Y'all know mallards are ducks. When they got to Boston, they felt too tired to fly any further. There was a nice pond in the public garden with a little island on it. The very place to spend the night quacked Mr. Mallard, so down they flapped. Next morning, they fished for their breakfast in the mud at the bottom of the pond, but they didn't find much. You're doing great.
Did I miss it? That's it. Go. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Just as they were getting ready to start on their way, a strange, enormous bird came by. It was pushing a boat full of people, and there was a man sitting on its back. Good morning, quacked Mr. Mallard, being polite. The big bird was too proud to answer, but the people on the boat threw peanuts into the water, so the mallards followed them all around the pond and got another breakfast, better than the first. I like this place, said Mrs. Mallard as they climbed out on the bank and waddled along. Why don't we build a nest and raise our ducklings right in this pond? There are no foxes and no turtles, and the people feed us peanuts. What could be better? Good, said Mr. Mallard, delighted that at last Mrs. Mallard had found a place that suited her. But, look out, squawked Mrs. Mallard all of a dither. You'll get run over. And when she got her breath, she added, this is no place for babies. It's all those horrid things rushing about. We'll have to look somewhere else. So they flew over Beacon Hill and round the state house, but there was no place there. Can we do the rest? No. They looked in Louisburg Square, but there was no water to swim in. Then they flew over the Charles River. This is better, quacked Mr. Mallard. That island looks like a nice, quiet place, and it's only a little way from the public garden. Yes, said Mrs. Mallard, remembering the peanuts. That looks like just the right place to hatch ducklings. So they chose a cozy spot among the bushes near the water and settled down to build their nest. And only just in time for now, they were beginning to molt. All their old wing feathers started to drop out and they would not be able to fly again until the new ones grew in. But of course they could swim, and one day they swam over to the park on the riverbank, and there they met a policeman called Michael. Michael fed them peanuts, and after that, the Mallards called on Michael every day. After Mrs. Mallard had laid eight eggs in the nest, she couldn't go to visit Michael anymore, because she had to sit on the eggs to keep them warm. She moved off to the nest only to get a drink of water or to have her lunch or to count the eggs and make sure they were all there. One day the ducklings hatched out. First came Jack, then Cack, and then Lack, then Mac and Knack and Quack and Pack and Quack. Mr. and Mrs. Mallard were bursting with pride. It was a great responsibility taking care of so many ducklings, and it kept them very busy. One day, Mr. Mallard decided he'd like to take a trip to see what the rest of the river was like further on. So off he set. I'll meet you in a week in the public garden, he quacked over his shoulder. Take good care of the ducklings. Don't you worry, said Mrs. Mallard. I know all about bringing up children, and she did. She taught them how to swim and dive. She taught them how to walk in a line, to come when they were called, and to keep a safe distance from bikes and scooters and other things with wheels. When at last she perfectly satisfied, when at last she felt perfectly satisfied with them, she said one morning, come along children, follow me. Before you could wink an eyelash, Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Knack, Whack, Pack, and Quack 
fell into line, just as they had been taught. Mrs. Mallard led the way into the water, and they swam behind her to the opposite bank. Savannah, you did great. Can you all give Savannah a hand for how well she did? <clears throat> do you know what I do for my daily job is I have to talk to members of Congress all day, and you're a much better audience than they are. You're much more mature. You did great. There they waded ashore and waddled along till they came to the highway. And Mrs. Mallard stepped out to cross the road. Honk, honk, went the horns on the speeding cars. Quack, went Mrs. Mallard as she tumbled again. Quack, 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 went Jack and Cack and Lack and Mac and Mac and Quack and Pack and Quack just as loud as their little quackers could quack. The cars kept speeding by and honking, and Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings kept right on quack, quack, quacking. They made such a noise that Michael, the policeman, came running, waving his arms and blowing his whistle. Have you all been to Boston? Has anyone been to Boston? Maybe. He planted himself in the center of the road and raised one hand to stop the traffic, and then beckoned with the other, the way policemen do for Mrs. Mallard to cross over. As soon as Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings were safe on the other side and on their way down Mount Vernon Street, Michael rushed back to his police booth. He called Clancy at headquarters and said, there's a family of ducks walking down the street, Clancy said. Family of what? Ducks, yelled Michael. Send a police car, quick. Have y'all been in a police car? Uh, you have? Uh-oh, we'll start tell that story later. Meanwhile, Mrs. Mallard had reached the corner bookshop and turned onto Charles Street with Jack and Cack, Lack, Mac, Mac, and, and Pack, all marching in line behind her. See them all marching back here? Y'all see that? Everyone stared. An old lady from Beacon Hill said, isn't it amazing? And the man who swept the street said, well now, ain't that nice? And when Mrs. Mallard heard them, she was so proud, she tipped her nose in the air and walked along with an extra swing in her waddle. Can you guys waddle? Can you waddle? Show me. Oh, come on, you can waddle, right? Excellent. When they came to the corner of Beacon Street, there was the police car with the four policemen that Clancy had sent from headquarters. The policemen held back the traffic so Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings could march across the street. See all the cars stopped and the ducks crossing over here. They marched right on to the public garden. Inside the gate, they all turned around to say thank you to the policemen, and the policemen smiled and waved goodbye. When they reached the pond and swam across the little island, there was Mr. Mallard waiting for them, just as he had promised. The ducklings liked the new island so much they decided to live there. All day long, they follow the swan boats and eat peanuts. And when night falls, they swim to their little island, and they go to sleep. That's the end, guys. Thank you, Savannah. Can y'all say thank you to Savannah for reading with us? And thank you to Kat, Kat and Caroline for your hot chocolate. Thanks for being here for Easter with us. I hope you guys have a great time.